こんにちは皆さん、元気ですかリサです。Welcome back to my channel and in this video we're going to learn the basic Japanese phrases, okay? And this is going to be the part 2. So if you have not checked out the part 1, it's a humble request to check out that video as well, okay? Because I have covered the major first 15 phrases in that video, okay? So, In this lesson, you will learn the basic survival phrases that you must know as a beginner. So let's begin. But before that, did you know the Japanese is categorized as formal and informal speech style? Yes, depending upon whom you are talking to, you have to change your speech style. So you will learn the phrases depending upon these factors. Okay. So I'll begin with the 16th phrase in continuation with the 15th in the first video. So the phrase number 16 is I'll be back soon. I'll be back soon in Japanese is Itte kimasu. Itte kimasu. I'll go and come back. It means. So if somebody is leaving and he is telling bye to you, he would say Itte kimasu. He's assuring you. That I'll try to come back as soon as possible, okay? So it is often regarded as a reply to itte r a s h a i that please do come back. Phrase number 17 is I'm back, I'm back to home in the sense. And this is an informal way again. Tadaima, tadaima, it means I'm home or I'm back. And this is a Japanese cultural manner to say this when you have come back home. And generally, when you enter and remove your shoes, you say tadaima. Since you say to your family members, it is going to be informal always, okay? Phrase number 18 is welcome back, welcome back home. Welcome back home is a reply to tadaima, that I'm home. And this phrase in Japanese is okaeri nasai, okaeri nasai. Okaeri is joined with the word nasai because a nasai shows your politeness. So if you want to be just not polite, you can simply say okaeri, okaeri. Nasai can be used, for example, your mama says okaeri nasai when your father returns home. But not necessarily, she would say only okaeri when you return home, right? So you are going to use this when your family members. Or somebody returns at home, okay? And this is very good to use this phrase, okay? Phrase number 19 is sorry. Sorry in the informal or in the formal way. Formally, we say sorry as gomen nasai. It's not completely informal, but it looks slight formal, slight better. And informally, we say gomen. Gomen. So you can use this for somebody who is younger than you. Because this is informal, and gomen nasai can be used depending upon the person. If the person is somebody who w a n t to who w a n t to receive your respect, you can say gomen nasai rather than simply saying gomen. Okay? So just like okaeri and okaeri nasai, which means welcome home, and oyasumi and oyasumi nasai, which means good night. And the sorry is also said as gomen and gomen nasai. So, from these examples, you must have understood that nasai at the end is a polite suffix. So, this shows your politeness. Also, the first example which we saw was gozaimas. So, the two words gozaimas and nasai show your politeness. So, gomen nasai is comparatively more formal, okay? But don't be mistaken to use gomen for elder, respectful people, okay? You have to use it only for your friends. 20 phrase is I am sorry or I apologize. And this is a formal enough phrase, okay? I am sorry in Japanese in the most formal way is Sumimasen. Sumimasen. This Sumimasen also does the work of excuse me for getting somebody's attention, okay? So you have to remember certain points about Sumimasen. First, that it does the work of both sorry as well as excuse me. Second, it is the most formal way to apologize. Even formal than gomen nasai. Okay? So, if you want to use the phrase for somebody who is extremely important for you, you are going to use sumimasen, not gomen nasai. Because sumimasen is way more formal than gomen nasai. Third point, 
is it can be used to grab somebody's attention, especially a uh, stranger. So if you are in Japan, if you want to ask somebody something, you are going to use the phrase sumimasen. Okay? Phrase number 21 is thank you for the meal. Thank you for the meal. There are two ways to thank for the meal. First is before and the second is after eating. Before eating, it is itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. It means thank you for your meal and you are supposed to say this before you start eating food, okay? The second is gojisouasama deshita. Gojisouasama deshita. It is thank you for the meal but after you finish eating your meal, okay? So remember that itadakimasu. It is thank you for offering the meal to us and you need to say this when you are about to begin eating, okay? But gochisouasama deshita is a thank you after eating the meal which implies that the food was very delicious and do say this phrase even if the food is not actually delicious okay because japanese people feel very happy and proud when you say this to them okay so phrase number 22 please say it one more time please say it one more time in japanese is in the formal way okay in the formal way it is there are two ways to say it i'll go on with the first phrase Mo ichido itte kudasai. And the second, Mo ichido onegai shimasu. Once again, Mo ichido itte kudasai. Or, Mo ichido onegai shimasu. Okay, now both of these phrases mean the same. Please say it one more time. Or, one more time, please. Okay? Now there is no such a huge difference between these two phrases, but there are two different ways to say one single thing. So you can choose either. Now generally, students use us to request teachers to repeat what they said. So if your teacher said something in Japan and you did not understand, you're going to be, huh? Sensei, mo ichido onegaishimasu? Sensei, can you please say it one more time? Okay. So here are some extra daily expressions which may help you in Japan. Phrase number 23 is, are you okay? Or is everything alright? Are you okay in Japanese is, daijoubu desu ka? Daijoubu desu ka? Right? So it shows that you are asking if he's alright, okay? Phrase number 24 is all the best. All the best in the informal way, okay? And the informal way it's gambatte. Gambatte. And you can use this for your friends only. For example, your friend is going for a match and you want to say that do your best or show them what you're made for. So you're going to say gambatte. This te at the end has a high intonation, okay? Phrase number 25 is all the best in the formal way. Gambatte kudasai. Gambatte kudasai. This kudasai at the end actually shows your politeness. Or it can be also term to please. Okay, so please do your best. This means that. Literally, it means that. But it corresponds to keep it up or do your best, okay? And this is the formal way. So you can use this to elders. And if your teacher are going for an inter-school teacher's competition, you can greet her or him by using this phrase. Sensei, gambatte kudasai. So she will feel very happy, okay? Now, you know around 24 phrases, informal and the formal one, of a different situations. You know the formal phrases for respectful, elder people, person with higher posture than you. You also know the informal phrases for your family and only for your friends. And you know the phrase is applicable at both conditions, like konnichiwa and konbanwa. So did you enjoy the lesson? And did you like my Halloween material? And these witches? So if yes, then please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more such interesting and scary lessons. So, so you have to do these four things. Subscribe, like, comment below and share my video everybody. So goodbye everybody, it was very good to meet you people again. And remember to watch this video one more time, to remember everything what we did perfectly. After all, it was a lot of information, right? So this is our witch team, and let me know in the comment box which one is the scariest, okay? So thank you everybody for watching my lesson. See you in the next lesson. Then, mata, tsugi no lesson de aimashou. Happy Halloween!